Hey YouTube, it's a beautiful fall day here in uh, Washington State, and so it seemed like it's a great day for doing some smoking, and while that kind of smoking is legal here in the state, that's not kind of the kind of smoking I'm talking about. I'm actually talking about smoking with my cabinet style Bradley smoker. Uh, I bought this a couple of years ago, uh, I, think it's, I think it's been about two years on the Black Friday sale from Cabela's, and uh, have, have uh, used it quite a bit. And I thought I would uh, give you guys a quick review of this thing, show you how it works, and talk about things I like about it, talk about things that uh, I think could be a little better. Um, and so, yeah, let's, uh, let's dive into it. Okay, now this is a cabinet style smoker. Now, I'm by no means an expert pit master, you know, barbecue specialist or anything like that. Um, you know, but having lived in, in Texas for, for about 13 years, uh, I got a number of friends that, uh, you know, are great at this kind of stuff. Uh, one friend in particular, Keith, uh, is one of the one of the best, you know, pitmaster barbecue smokers that I've ever seen. Um, guy, This is the kind of guy that, you know, when he hosts an event or something like that, uh, you know, he gets up in the middle of the night, you know, starts starts smoking the meat and he'll smoke it for you know 16 hours or whatever and he'll tend that thing all day long um, and so he was a valuable resource for me when uh, I went to do my research and, and figure out what kind of smoker I wanted to get and uh, you know so I'm gonna share a little bit of what I learned what Keith shared with me um, about this particular smoker and, and why I chose it but you know let's take a uh, you know let's take a quick look at it um, what you see here is just the main cabinet, and so um, you see it's gotten a, a lot of use. It's uh, it's very well seasoned, um, and it's very uh, empty on the inside right now. Uh, but this is a four rack uh, Bradley smoker, and uh, you've got spots for four four racks, four shelves right there to put the meat on. You've got a vent on the top. You've got a heating element back here. And um, and then it's a you know reflective tray uh, down on the bottom, and put it together. Uh, I've got a little diffuser uh, piece right here that basically just um, slides in this way, and that catches the drippings and stuff like that. I've got a pan that goes in the bottom. And then I've got a bowl uh, that I'm going to put some water in. Okay, that catches the coals when they're done cooking. Now, um, this is a digital smoker. And so there is a control unit. One of the things I like about this particular unit is the fact that this control unit can pop off nice and easy. So that way I don't have to leave it outside where it gets moisture, gets weathered, and things like that. Um, that might damage it, so I can pull it all apart and, and really quickly and easily, put it back together really quickly and easily, and keep the control mechanism out of the weather. So this just pops in on the side over here and hangs off side of the unit. That. Then it has a little chimney stack for the um, cats that you're going to smoke. And then I've got three cables. I got one cable for the sensor. I've got one that gets power to the heating element in the back and then your main power that plugs into your cord. And these all just loop back. So let me show you how those hook up and uh, then we'll uh, load it up with the uh, meat and we'll get this thing started. Okay, here is the back of the unit. I've got a power plug here. I've got a sensor port here. I've got two power plugs right here and I've got another sensor port back here. So to hook this thing up, all I have to do is plug in power to the heating element, plug in 
my temperature sensor and then plug in my power. Okay, so for the meat today, I decided to smoke some lovely baby back ribs. And you can see this is just one of the wire racks that uh, pops in here. I'm going to put it on the second shelf. This is not meant to be a lesson in how to cook baby rack back ribs because everybody has their own sort of cooking style that they prefer. Um, but my meat's already seasoned up and, and ready to go in. So next, I'm going to go ahead and load up some biscuits. Now this smoker uses wooden biscuits. Um, and you get these on Amazon or a number of different places. There's actually some videos that actually show you how to make them yourself. And um, that's one of the things that I also like about this smoker is that it uses these biscuits. Um, and the reason being is that each one of these biscuits uh, smokes for 20 minutes. So if, like with the ribs I'm doing, uh, I'm going to smoke them for three hours and so I know exactly how many biscuits I need and I can load up with with just the right amount uh, to smoke the meat. So that's one of the really nice things uh, about this smoker as opposed to something like the Traegers and some of the other drum styles that use an auger and the little uh, wooden sawdust pellets. Um, those you just kind of end up throwing a bunch of uh, pellets in a hopper and you just kind of use them up until they're gone. And you know that's a that's a again it's a great way to do it. Um, I have nothing against the Traegers, uh, but this actually I felt was a little bit uh, uh, better suited for my particular needs. So if each one lasts 20 minutes, I'm going to smoke three hours. I'm going to need nine of these things. So I'm using a, a mix of different woods. I'm using mesquite. I'm also using hickory uh, on this particular smoking. Uh, you can get these in all sorts of different uh, uh, types of wood. So, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's exactly what I need right there. And so, I just load those up. And then I'm going to throw in a couple of rings here. And what this does is it helps push the last couple of pellets or biscuits onto the burning plate and you can see the burning plate is right down here so what happens is it just feeds it in here and gets onto this uh, element here and that's what burns it and then the smoke will come up and smoke the meat so that's what we're gonna we're gonna do right now and then I'm gonna plug it in and show you how to set the timers and we'll start it smoking and then once I've got it started smoking I'll walk through kind of what my decision process of why I chose this one and, and all of that. So let's, uh, let's do that next. Okay, with the unit plugged in, now I just gotta turn everything on. And you can see I've got uh, multiple control panels here that I can use to uh, get my device uh, set up, get the smoker set up with what I want. So in this particular case, I can set my oven timer and I can set my oven temperature here. So if I wanna cook at 230 degrees, I just set it for 230 degrees and then if I want to cook for the ribs I'm doing for five hours I'm gonna smoke for three hours and then I'm gonna cook it for a total of five so I'm gonna set my oven timer for five hours and then as I said I'm gonna smoke for three hours so I'm gonna set my smoke timer set for three hours and then as you can see in here I think you can see everything. I'm going to advance my wood until it gets to the hot plate right there. And I'm going to do one more time. And you can see it just pushes the wood out onto the onto the burning element. And so it's going to start heating that up and start smoking it and it'll do it for a total of three hours. So it's extremely easy to set this thing up and just walk away. It's very much kind of like a crock pot of smokers is that you can just set it and forget it. You know exactly how many biscuits you need to use so it'll burn through exactly what it needs to. It pushes the empty biscuits off into that uh, water when they're done 
cooking or done burning. So, you know, it's a, it's a very straightforward sort of setup. Okay, so let's talk about why I selected this. Um, as I said, my buddy Keith is, is a, you know, pit master kind of guy. Um, and he, you know, he provided me a lot of input when I was doing a lot of research because I looked at a whole bunch of different ones uh, before I selected this Bradley. Um, and uh, a big reason why I actually selected this because this is a secondary smoker that uh, Keith uses when he barbecues and when he smokes. Um, he still does stuff very much the traditional way, but you know he realized that uh, you know when he hosts events, he is stuck tending the the big drum barrel uh, smoker all day long, and so he doesn't get a chance to to uh, spend time with his guests and stuff. So he picked up one of these as well. Um, in fact, he picked it up before I picked up this one, and. Uh, um, because it gave him a little bit more time to be able to visit with guests and stuff when he's when he's uh, when he's got friends over. So, um, you know, I did a lot of research, as I said. I looked at a bunch of different ones, and there's a lot of really good smokers out there. So, um, and this isn't to knock the the Traegers or any of the others that are out there. Um, I'm sure those are all really good smokers as well. Um, but I really like this one, and and here's some of the things that that Keith pointed out to me that I felt were fairly important, right? First is the ability to be able to remove the control panel and get it out of the weather. Um, you know, moisture is, is obviously bad for electronics and so leaving the control panel out in the moisture, especially when you're in places like Austin where it's humid or here in Bellevue where it uh, rains quite a bit, um, you know, that can be really hard on the control panel. So the fact that I can disassemble this really, really easily and really, really quickly was a really nice feature. So that's one of the things. Um, the other thing that Keith pointed out to me is that the auger style, like like uh, um, the drums with the with the you know like the Traegers and stuff like that, that use an auger to feed the, the pellets into the uh, smoke chamber. Um, well, when you live in a you know some place where it's a really moist or wet environment, like here in Washington or in Texas, um, that moisture can can get into those pellets and you know start to mildew um, if they're left out in that in that auger and that in the hopper. And so um, that's obviously not the type of wood you want to use to smoke your meat. So the fact that these use biscuits and each biscuit is 20 minutes and you can load up exactly what you need and leave the rest in a nice dry environment is uh, a really nice feature as well. So that was uh, the second thing that I liked about it. The uh, third thing is that it's just, you know, it, it's a very small footprint. You can, you can put it anywhere um, and, you know, it, it doesn't take up a ton of space. So that was really nice. The construction quality is, is very solid on it. Um, the ease of use to be able to just set it and forget it is really nice and so it's all these things that uh, combine that help me choose this one over the others. Now I know a lot of the others have a lot of these same features a lot of them have kind of the set it and forget it sort of uh, capability and that's great um, but it was all these other things like being able to disassemble it and keep the the wood out of the moisture those those were uh, uh, kind of what pushed it over the edge for me uh, towards this particular unit. I'm sure the others do a great job smoking. This also does a great job smoking. Um, so, you know, overall I'm really, really pleased with this, this particular smoker. Now there are some drawbacks as well. And um, the fact, for example, that these uses the biscuits, well, you can't get those anywhere. You can't walk into your local, you know, sporting goods store or, you know, hardware store and get pellets for it. Um, you can't get the biscuits for it. You have to order them online. Um, and they're definitely more expensive. Um, so, you know, that is that is one of the drawbacks. You can see it's actually actually starting to smoke really well now. Um, so that's uh, boy, it smells really good. And um, so that's one of the drawbacks. The other drawbacks is that um, you know it sits on the ground, so it's nice to get it up and elevated. So you know, building a stand for it or something like that would be nice. Where with the the uh, uh, drum styles and stuff, they're already on a, essentially a stand. So, um, you know, that is, a, that is a drawback to, you know, the cabinet style smokers. But it's not a, it's not a huge drawback. 
as far as uh, the amount of food you can cook, this is the four rack model. They have a six rack model as well. The four rack does a lot of food. Um, you can see I got one rack of ribs on, on one shelf and I could easily you know, do th another three racks and that's a lot of ribs. Um, you know, that'll feed a lot of people. It's big enough that I could do a turkey or something in there and do a really good job. So, you know, it's got plenty of, plenty of space inside, even with the small four rack model. But if you need, you know, more capabilities, more cooking surface, more cooking area, uh, the six rack model is obviously a, would be a better choice then. So, um, it's, a, it's a very capable unit. Uh, I've been very, very pleased with it. Like I said, I've had it about two years now. It's worked great. Uh, it, it does a great job cooking the food. It's very simple to, and easy to use. It's very simple and easy to set up. So, you know, overall it's a really nice smoker. And uh, there you go, there's how it's looking. And we're gonna go ahead and flip these over. close it right away so that way we don't lose too much heat but uh, we're getting a good smoke so let's uh, let's check back when it's done okay so the ribs just finished cooking so I just pulled them off um, you can see the ribs are done they got a nice caramel uh, caramelized finish um, and they look just absolutely wonderful it's, uh, See, they uh, came out very well cooked. They're still moist. So, see, Smoker does a great job. It's uh, very pleased with it. So.